Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming out this morning to salute our veterans, to take a moment from your busy days to say thank you to our veterans who have given so much for this country. At this time, I would like to ask Father Ed, I'm sorry, change of plans. Rabbi Sussman, who has another commitment today, uh, is going to open up with our invocation this morning. Uncover. On November 11th, 150 years ago, this very day, William Sherman was leading his troops through Atlanta in an effort to demoralize the already weary South. President Lincoln had been reelected just three days before, hoping that the election, using his words, will be to the lasting advantage, if not to the very salvation of our country. 100 years ago this year, Europe and the Middle East erupted in an open conflict that would eventually engulf much of the world in the destruction of the flower of European, American, and British youth. And they hoped that the armistice of 96 years ago today could be celebrated as the war to end all wars. Their hope would not be granted. Wars have still invaded our homes but hope will not be extinguished. The, 20th, the 20th century and these past 14 years prove the truth of the potential inhumanity written at Gettysburg, the Argonne Forest, the Bulge, Chosen Reservoir, Da Nang, and Rostropo. And as there have been wor further world conflicts, the armistice celebration has given way to the honor of all of our veterans. <laughs> They help us to protect against the continuation of any state's sanction of slaughter. So we ask our sons and daughters to don the uniform of our nation to preserve the rights and liberties afforded to all Americans. It is our prayer that they never have to find themselves again in harm's way, but if they must enter the field of battle, we ask the God in whom we so strongly believe to keep them safe, to endow them with courage, to instill in them honor, and to preserve within them mercy. So on this Veterans Day, we pray that they may return to their loved ones untroubled by their duty. May the lessons of the past teach us the preciousness of the lives of those who willingly commit themselves to our freedom. May the God of all protect them throughout their service, as well as fulfill our prayers by their healthy and safe return. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Sussman. Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, veterans, at this time I'd like to introduce members of your governing body in Freehold Township, Deputy Mayor Anthony Amiano, Committeewoman Barbara McMorrow, and Committeeman Tom Cook. Detail three rest. I love when they do that. This morning I was thinking about what I was going to talk about, and, and each year I typically write out a, a little bit of a speech. But yesterday I was reading, and what I read yesterday changed everything that I was going to say this morning. And so there's no speech, it's just going to be me talking. But the only advantage about being mayor is if I have you here, you have to listen to me. Well, you don't have to, you can leave, but you're stuck with me for the next th three minutes. I, <laughs> nice. I read a lot, and obviously I can't shy away from the fact, you know I'm an, I'm an elected Republican official, but I read from the right, I read from the left, I read in the middle, I try to read everything. Yesterday I was reading something that was obviously written from the left, um, and basically the headline of the article said, just because he's in uniform doesn't mean he's a hero. So that got my attention. This requires further investigation. <laughs> And the theme of the article was that just because someone served in the military or a policeman or a fireman doesn't make him a hero, and we have to stop this, uh, this thing that we're doing, which is too nationalistic and this overzealous patriotism that America has because everybody's now a hero. And this was the theme of the article, and I'm reading, and I went from being just slightly annoyed to being really outraged by the time I got done, because I wanted to ask the person who wrote the article, you can say that when you can show me your DD-214. Because you're right, there's probably a difference between 
the person who jumps on a hand grenade and sacrifices himself to save all of his comrades, and the person who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, driving in that vehicle that goes over an IED and takes off his legs. So there's a difference in what happened that day. One was obviously more of a self-sacrifice that had a split second to react, and there was some heroism there that didn't occur when you just got accidentally blown up. But in both of those cases, the people who were injured made a conscious decision sometime earlier that they were going to leave their family and friends and go away someplace that they didn't get to choose and fight in a war that they didn't get to select at a time that they didn't pick and put themselves in harm's way for all of us. And that's what being a veteran is. And so regardless of how you feel politically, I think we would all agree that when someone is willing to be away from their families for an extended period of time and put themselves in a situation which could be so dangerous that, yeah, they are a hero. And they've given you the right to write the article and have your descending comments, and that's okay, and I respect the author's right to write whatever he wants. But he also has to remember that the only reason he's able to write those comments is because everybody here that served. Uh, the other day I was watching the news and they were interviewing an imam in London who was a very outspoken war-mongering cleric who supports ISIS in London. And he is protesting about London's freedom of speech. And the irony is so overwhelmingly hilarious, except that it's not funny, I wanted to bash his head in. And I think to myself, you're there protesting these people's freedom of speech because you think Sharia law should be the law of the land in Great Britain, and that no one should be allowed to speak their mind, similar to the way that ISIS thinks about here in America. And I think if that's how you feel, that is your right, and you should go there, because you live in a land of freedom, where you can say and do anything you want, because of all of our veterans who have served and given you that right. And so today, when Rory and I were speaking to the fourth graders, obviously we're talking at a different level to little, you know, small children, they're nine years old, but we asked the question, how many of you had parents or brother and sister who served in the armed forces? And I would say it was somewhere between a third and a half of the class in Freehold Township, and we're, we're not in... Amarillo, Texas, or by Fort Benning. I mean, you know, we're in Freehold. And yet, the amount of people who have served in this area is overwhelming. And it's encouraging, and it's patriotic, and it really makes me proud to be a member of the governing body of this town. Because the people that live here, they do appreciate the sacrifices, and they do understand what's involved to put on a uniform and leave the comforts of home and go away for months, years, forever, maybe come home not quite the same person anymore. It's a, it's an honor and a privilege to be here to talk to you today. And I look out and I see my sea of red. I'm, I'm only a, an associate member of the Marine Corps League, but I'm so proud to be associated with these gentlemen in the Marine Corps who have done so much. It's really, a, it's really a pleasure, and I thank you. Through my association with the Marine Corps League, I got to meet a gentleman named Rory Hamill. Uh, Rory has served in the Marine Corps League. He did three tours, which he's going to tell you about. And he came home a wounded warrior. And yes, being injured does make you a hero. Why? Because he didn't have to grab the mine detection device off of his friend's back and say, I got this one. He could let somebody else do it. But he didn't, because that's not how they roll. They take care of each other. And so it was his day that day to step on the IED. And so his life is forever changed after a year and a half of surgeries and all kinds of personal anguish that he has to go through to get himself back together. And now I'm happy to say that Rory's back to work and his three little kids are doing great and life is getting back closer to a new version of normal, but not without an awful lot of effort. And I think the only way that our veterans can continue down their journeys of recovery from injury, whether mental or physical, is through the support of their communities. And that's why I appreciate you all being here so much today. So without further ado, I would, uh, at this point, before I introduce my keynote speaker. We're going to start our day with the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'd ask you to please rise. Yeah. Anthony Aniano, Deputy oh. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, 
Please give a nice Freehold Township welcome to Corporal Rory Hamill, United States Marine Corps. Thank you, Mayor Salkin. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone for coming out today um, in celebration of Veterans Day. Veterans Day, um, it really uh, hits home for me. It's, uh, it's, it's great to celebrate it in recognition of everyone that I served with, but it's harder on the other hand as well for me, for, for all of my friends and brothers that I left behind. And lots of us join. We don't fully expect, you know, we, we don't know what we're getting into. But once you get over there and you get put in a situation, I like to think of it, we're ordinary people who get put into extraordinary circumstances and when you're over there fighting next to each other the only thing that matters is your brother to your left and your right and you want to stop anything bad from coming back here and that's what we did every day um, we certainly you know as much as we appreciate hearing you know the support and the love back here we don't think of ourselves as heroes at all um, it's very humbling to see the support that we get back here and I know myself and every other veteran is greatly appreciative of it. I joined the Marine Corps in 2006, right out of high school. I was 17 years old and I shipped off to Paris Island. And my family was in the military and it was it was something that I always heavily considered. Once I got to Paris Island, I wasn't truly, uh, I wasn't aware of what I was getting myself into, but I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change Thing. Getting screamed at at four o'clock in the morning to get off the bus and you know all hell broke loose. But soon after my basic training and I went to the school of infantry and everything, I soon deployed to Iraq with Second Battalion Eighth Marines. And that deployment wasn't as kinetic. Um, it was still hard, regardless. Um, just living in the conditions, dealing with the environment, dealing with the people. There's a lot of things that we take for granted back here, uh, such as like running water laundry, go down to the store, you know, pick up groceries. They don't have that there. And there's constant infighting and everything. I came back and we were told that we were going to Afghanistan. And this was in 2009 when there was this big operation going on that most of you may have heard about where we had to push in and take out key leadership of the Taliban in southern Helmand province in Afghanistan. On that deployment, we lost 14 men several of which um, were right next to me. Uh, several people got wounded. And that, that deployment changed me, um, for better or worse. I like to look at the positives and everything. It, um, it truly showed me you know, what life could be like. And it truly made me appreciative of everything that I have back here, you know, friends and family. Those 14 men, they fought Ferociously, they fought with such valor I've never seen before. These are ordinary people that, you know, you grow up with. You know, you get used to being around, and you would never expect anything great out of them until they're put into that situation. But what I saw over there, it, it truly, I'm in awe. And it's, it's very hard for me to talk about, but I like to talk about it. I like to share my experience with other veterans because I know... You guys know exactly what it's like. You know what it's like to go through that kind of thing. In 2011, I re-enlisted. We were on a routine foot patrol in Marja, Afghanistan, and we got local intelligence on the ground that there was an improvised explosive device in a compound. So I went over there with my squad. It was about 50 feet away from where the guy told us, and I took the minesweeper off my point man's back. And I, I jokingly said, see you on the other side. And I didn't, I didn't fully uh, expect what happened next to happen. I got about three quarters of the compound cleared. And I stepped on a low metallic pressure plate. My right leg was instantly severed. And I remember hitting the grounds. There was a cloud of smoke in front of me. I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. And I tried standing up, but I couldn't. And it was, it was a really gratifying feeling. All the training, all the teaching, all the instructing. I taught my fellow Marines that were under me 
what to do in that type of situation, how to take control if your leadership was injured or worse killed. And they performed amazingly, admirably, and it was it was a great satisfaction to myself as a leader to see my Marines take charge of the situation and save my life. Unfortunately, I died on the helicopter. Um, I lost too much blood, and the drugs that they gave me for pain killing lowered my heart rate too much, and I flatlined for two minutes. I came back in a white room. There was white sheets, white curtains up, white ceiling, soft white light, and I thought that that was it. But I called out for anyone. I said hello, and a Marine Staff Sergeant who was uh, attached to our unit, who was a liaison there at the main camp, came through the curtain and he touched my hand. And as soon as he did that, I, I burst out in tears because I felt his hand. I knew it was real. I knew that I was alive, and I knew I was going to see my children and my family again. And it's been a long, hard road since then, and I've overcame a lot. I was in a, a severely dark place for a long time, and uh, thought thoughts that unfortunately some of my brothers who made it back ultimately went through with. But that's why I like speaking about it, that's why I like talking to fellow veterans, because I want to inspire people. If you, if I can make it through what I made it through, then I know you guys can. You know, whether you're having a good day or a bad day, if, if you're having one of those really, really bad days, you can always overcome it, and there's lots of support. In closing, I just want to say thank you again. Um, thank you for the support from the community, and uh, thank you to Freehold Township and everyone. You guys have been really amazing, and I, I know myself and the other veterans really appreciate all the help that you guys give us. Now you know why the article made me mad. Because that's what a hero sounds like. It's not just the part about the leadership on the battlefield. It's the part about trying to pick yourself up out of a very dark place and get on with your life. He's got three little kids at home, three adorable little kids. They need that. And so whether you're having a bad day or you're not having a bad day, it doesn't matter. Because your kids need you. So you suck it up. Do what you got to do. And you take care of your family because it's what you've always been trained to do. And uh, your bravery is not lost on us. You're an inspiration to everybody. And I appreciate the fact that you're willing to talk about it. When you're talking to these fourth graders, I told Rory beforehand, I said, we're going to talk about your leg because little kids are going to stare and they don't know what they're supposed to say. Do I act like I saw it? Can I ask a question about it? And the adults aren't much different. You see a veteran who's lost an arm or a leg or both or all, and you think, what do I do? You don't do anything different than you would for anybody else because this is just a regular guy who got hurt. But now he's better. And so you can talk about his leg. And you can tell a little kid that, you know, I'm not quite Iron Man, but I am pretty cool. <laughs> they thought that was cool. They also want to know how many batteries it took. <laughs> but Rory is, uh, it's been an inspiration to know him and, and to get a chance to, to be his friend. And, and uh, so many veterans that I've met have impacted me. And people sometimes will say, you know, I'm a busy person. You know, how do you get it all done? And I go, how do I get it all done? I am truly inspired by the people around me every day. You find a way. 119th Corps Support Battalion, Bill Pieces Unit. I don't think Bill's here today, but they gave me a banner many years ago, and, and their motto says, we'll find a way. That hangs in my office at work. And I just know that no matter what life throws at me, we'll find a way. Because there's no other option, really. So if you just have that attitude ahead of time, you just save yourself a couple of minutes. In closing, I would uh, I would ask Father Ed to join us at this time for a prayer, and then we were going to uh, we will change the colors. We will change the colors. Let's change the colors first. Sorry, Father. Ed. This is what happens when you don't write everything down and you try and do it from memory from every year. But. So we're gonna we're gonna ask to change the colors. Please rise.
Oh. Father Ed. A prayer to honor all veterans. Heavenly Father, thank you for America's heroes who have served our country so faithfully. We honor our veterans for their sacrifice to our country and for their courage and integrity. May every citizen realize that our country is better and safer because of their valiant duty. We praise you for all veterans who have gone before us in eternal rest. We especially pray for those veterans who made the ultimate sacrifice while defending our country. Bless their families and comfort them with the thankful prayers of a grateful nation. Let us not perpetuate war, but safeguard peace and preserve your gift of equality and freedom. Through the efforts of our veterans, help us continue to promote justice in all nations. We thank you for our veterans, past and present, and for the knowledge that you are with us in all things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Ed. You're very welcome. To Rory Hamill and to the rest of our veterans here today, Free All Township says thank you for your service. You are true patriots. The rest of the Freehold Township residents who came out today just to support our veterans and to show your thanks. Thank you for this like, nice crowd that we have today and, and to Barbara McMorrow who was responsible for the weather this afternoon. Thank you. You did a great job. It's perfect outside. Uh, Rabbi Sussman did, took care of it last year, but yes. <clears throat> um, thank you all. You are dismissed. Thank you. An eagle It's a big old land with countless dreams And happiness ain't out of reach Hard work pays off the way it should Yeah, I've seen enough to know that we've got it good Where the stars and the stripes And the eagle flies In a harbor for what we believe And there's a bell that still echoes The price that it costs to be free I pledge allegiance to this flag And if that bothers you, well that's too bad But if you've got pride and you're proud you do Use them more like me and you. Where 
by the stars and stripes 